The first part to preparing your models is to cut it. And my preferred way to cut this is with an X-Acto knife. Um, the cutting mat serves as a base so that I don't cut my table. And it's better than a piece of cardboard for a base because it prolongs the life of your blades. If you cut cardboard all the time, it's going to dull the blade much faster. Um, let me show you my replacement blades. This is a set of 100. I bought it for 25 bucks off eBay, so each blade is essentially 25 cents, which is pretty cheap. And uh, let's see. I'll show you um, how I organize it, sort of. This, I just uh, put a piece of white paper here to mark the first dulled blade that um, I've used or finished using. So I wrote new here which means this side is new and I wrote this line to indicate that the blade goes in this way. So these are all my old blades that I've um, gone through since starting Papercraft and it's not even halfway yet. So that means out of all the models that I've made in a year and a half, I haven't gone through like 40 blades yet. So it's, it's a good investment. And it's good to keep the dull blades because when we use it for paper craft, we only use the very tip over here. But this part, the bottom part of the blade is still extremely sharp. So in case you want to cut fabric or something, you still could use this. Also, cutting with a blade is much faster and you are more adept and flexible at cutting different things than a scissors. Because imagine cutting, using scissors and cutting into the into the piece to cut the glue flap it's it, the likelihood of cutting the the piece itself where the ink is is higher than if you're using a blade to cut away from the piece if you know what i mean um although when you cut with the scissors it doesn't fray the edges of the paper more than the x-acto blade does so that's the only advantage that i can see for scissors but once you start getting used to the blade, you can never go back to scissors. I, I, used, I started with scissors, and once I got blades, I never go back. Okay, and that's that. This one has a rubber handle. This is the X-Acto X2000 blade, and that's what they call it. Yeah, it's very comfortable, and of course, there's no better comfort than having a good grip on your knife. The lighting, here's my light, here's my lamp. I positioned it right here and um, if you see where my shadow is, this is my natural cutting motion. So the shadow is directly in my way and it's gonna be a little confusing to tell whether I'm cutting my own, <coughs> whether I'm following the shadow or I'm following the line of the glue tab or the piece because I, I cut in this direction. So to fix that, I just have to adjust my adjustable lamp. I'm gonna make it go towards this angle. So the shadow is moved. It's more upwards and out of the way. So if I cut like this, I can see exactly where I have to guide the blade. You would want to use a good lighting source because it makes the edges of the lines much more visible so that your eyes don't strain as much i mean i guess if i turn it off it's it's you mean we, we still can see where the edges of the pieces are just so that with the lights on it's um easier to see you i can't really show you how much easier it is to see with this crappy video quality but I mean, you'll, you'll see it when you actually do the paper craft cutting. When I'm cutting, I mean, cutting is the most mundane, boring part of paper craft. And, but unfortunately, it's also very important because if you cut off a piece of the piece, then when you glue it, it's gonna be off by that much. And also, if you cut it off, then the glue tab from the other piece that goes to where it got cut off is going to be exposed so you're gonna have double the work for you if you want to conceal that 
So it's always good to be extra careful when cutting. What I like to do when I'm cutting is listen to national public radio. It's good to be able to listen to something while you cut. I mean, you could you could listen to whatever you want. That's just my preference. Rulers. If you choose to use rulers, I'd recommend something of good quality, like a stainless steel ruler that um, has some has something like this, a piece of cork underneath, so that it sticks on the paper. And it actually, if you look on the side, it, there's a level of there, there's a height to this ruler, and it's it's not touching smack onto the paper. And you need this because when you cut along the ruler. If the ruler is smack touching the paper, your blade might travel onto the ruler on accident. And this happens with those flat plastic rulers and you end up cutting the, the ruler itself and not the, the paper. So that's that. I prefer not to use rulers because there are not very often parts of the piece or the paper craft where it's perfectly straight and it's going to be a hassle to end up having to move the reposition the ruler all the time and also use it, relying on rulers for the straight edges sort of dull your cutting skills too so so that's just my two cents on the psychology behind using rulers when you're cutting try to use your entire arm and to go in the most natural arm direction like this and it's better to do that than to use just your finger to cut like this you you have more strength with your arm than just in your fingers and that way you don't tire as easily compared to when you're just using your fingers although at first you're going to be more comfortable using just your fingers to cut like that but it's, yeah, it's good practice to use your entire arm when cutting like this. You'll find that it's actually more accurate that way and you can make more bold cuts. Sometimes if you're, if I'm, sometimes when I'm using a slightly dull blade cutting and I'm using just my fingers, it there's not enough strength to cut into the paper and I, I end up having to recut the area just to to uh, confirm that I've broken the paper I'm not sure if you can see this but there are some glue tabs here and my right hand cuts in this direction so to cut the glue tab I'm gonna have to go like this and that is not recommended because it's hard to tell where on the blade it actually cuts when you're looking at it from this direction and you don't want to cut into this piece so it's hard to tell where to exactly stop so in that so that's why i recommend always turning the paper around so that when you start the tip of the blade that stabs into the paper first that's where the end of the glue tab line is marked that's where you can guarantee that you're not cutting into the ink which is more valuable than the glue tab with glue tabs you can also take shortcuts you don't have to cut it ex exactly where the line is marked so the the only part where i take my time to concentrate is where i place the tip of the blade which is right next to the edge of the ink and i just cut away carelessly because i can like that. like that yeah so just like that okay I'm all done with cutting when I finish cutting I put everything that belongs on one page in one area and you don't have to make a cardboard box like I did you could always use a this is a, a sheet of scratch paper and just fold it in half and stick your pieces in there that's it. Um, I choose not to organize the way the pieces are lined up because I could always just find which piece. But I want to keep at least the pieces that belong to each page in one place. So you don't have to go scrambling looking around for random pieces all over the place.